What's up? What's going on, YouTube? This will be my third part of the Sabbath Rest. It's best series. Just like Hashitan, which is the devil, has done since the garden, he's always trying to mess up what Yahweh has set apart. The weekly Sabbath is no different. First, I want to read, before I read the scripture, I'm going to read out of this, which is the translation I normally read out of. I read this section in the back. Under Sabbath, obviously. Number six. Who then changed it to Sunday? In effect, nullifying it. In Daniel 7.25, we read, Of a horn, a sovereign. Remember, in those days, the Gentiles regarded their sovereigns as deities. This one is often interpreted as being the anti-Messiah. The enemy of the chosen people. In Daniel 7.25, we read that he would intend to change appointed times or festivals and law. The RCC, or the Roman Catholic Church, openly boasts that they changed Sabbath to Sunday. This change was preceded by Emperor Constantine legislating in the year 321 that the venerable day of the sun was to be kept at, as a day of rest. Remember, Constantine was a worshiper of Sol Invictus, the sun deity. Look that up on the internet, Sol Invictus. The church soon followed suit, and in the year 336, some give the date as 364. At the Council of Laodicea, Canon 29, the Christians were commanded to observe the Sunday as well. Bishop, I'm sure I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, Eusebius, 270 to 338 CE, who worked with Constantine, admits to the church's decision to change from Sabbath to Sunday. I don't care what a lot of people might say about the Torah of Yahweh being a curse. They are wrong. The Sabbath is a curse, I mean. Oh, oh, just check and see if y'all sleep out there in YouTube land. No, it's a blessing. A day set apart to Yahweh. A day to put all the craziness of our lives away and just chillax. Just take it easy. I haven't been keeping Sabbath all my life, but I can remember. But I've been keeping it long enough to make it hard to remember what life was like without it. Anybody that's out there that keeps Sabbath, just try to remember before you kept Sabbath what life was like. Just think about that for a minute. It's probably very stressful because you had less rest and less time to hit the pause button. Just take a chill pill. Yahweh is a loving Elohim. That's why he commands us to observe his Sabbath and to rest on it. Next thing I want to read is out of the Andrew Gabriel Ross translation of the Aramaic or the Peshitta New Testament. Which I highly recommend it. I'm going to read something out of the back under Shabbat section. Not shocking. What makes Shabbat so very special is that Yahshua HaMashiach, HaMashiach is Messiah in Hebrew, is the master of Sabbath. Those who celebrate the Shabbat in Mashiach recognize that Mashiach is the eternal connection and the reason for Shabbat. Like anyone who hosts a celebration, they have a purpose and reason for, for it that is conveyed to those who attend. And Shabbat, of course, is the weekly event of Mashiach. Mashiach was, is, and forever will be the reason for Shabbat. And this has been evident since Shabbat was given at the creation of the world. Shabbat is the completion of the week where the spiritual man rests and rejuvenates his spirit, soul, and body in Mashiach. Most folks understand that after six days of work that the Creator wasn't all tuckered out. But he gave rest to those who would recognize his role in our lives. He rested from his works which means he delighted and was very satisfied with all that he created therefore part of the rest we enter into is to enjoy the fruits of his labor his and our own labors in him the greatest fruit of Yahweh's labor was to make man in his image so that man can could build invent and fulfill his own dreams and enter into and join that rest that Yahweh himself created when Yahweh's people enter into his Shabbat, or rest, they are connecting with Mashiach. However, what was intended as a spiritual 
rest and unity with Mashiach was soon reduced by man into a ritual effort of the flesh, an intellectual, theological idea and socio-political factor that took on humanistic and Gnostic interpretations, making it a burden rather, rather than a blessing. Many Christians follow religious traditions that teach that it doesn't matter which day you keep as Shabbat because they've never personally experienced the Shabbat, true Shabbat rest. Going to church on Saturdays versus Sunday isn't automatically going to bring a person into Shabbat rest. It is Mashiach who establishes Shabbat within the soul, which is why it is full-heartedly for religious men to conjure up with their own Shabbat and posture Sunday as the Shabbat. Obviously, if Christians would have realized that Mashiach is the substance of the seventh-day Shabbat, they would not have abandoned Shabbat. There are certain things in the Torah that Yahweh expects of his people. Honoring Shabbat, obviously, is one of them. Yahweh expects us to set apart one day a week to him and deny ourselves. Now, we can't just pick a day like some folks might say. The Sabbath is the same day of the week every week, the seventh day. Sabbath is very important to Yahweh since it is the sign between him and his people. Leviticus 20 verse 7 says, And you shall set yourselves apart and shall be set apart, for I am Yahweh your Elohim. Yahweh requires his people to be set apart. Part of being set apart is keeping Shabbat. Going to church on Sunday is not being set apart. It means the people go to church on Sunday every week. Being set apart is going against the grain. Keeping Sabbath is definitely going against the grain. We can all agree that buying and sell is not a good thing to do on Sabbath. Know the phrase, thou shalt not buy or sell on the Sabbath, is not in the Torah. But there are scriptures that show this to be a practice that Yahweh does not like, is not pleased with. I want to read Amos 8 verses 1 through 5. Verse 1. This is what the Master Yahweh showed me. And see a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. And Yahweh said to me, the end has come upon my people, Yisrael. No longer do I pardon them. And the songs of the Hakel shall be wailing in that day, declares the Master Yahweh. Many dead bodies everywhere thrown into any place. Hush! Hear this. You are swallowing up the needy to do away with the poor of the land. Saying, when does the new moon pass so that we sell grain and the Sabbath so that we trade our wheat to make the ephah small and the shep great and to falsify the scales by deceit. Yahweh is raining down judgment on Israel and what is part of their reason? Because they were not keeping Sabbath set apart. They are buying the sale on the Sabbath. Nehemiah chapter 10, we're going to read 28 through 31. And the rest of the people, the priests, the lay weeks, the gatekeepers, the singers, the Nethanim, and all those who had separated themselves from the peoples of the lands unto the Torah of Elohim, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, all who had knowledge and understanding, were joining with their brothers, their nobles, and were entering into a curse and into an oath to walk in the Torah of Elohim, which was given by Moshe, the servant of Elohim, and to guard and do all the commands of Yahweh our Elohim, and his right rulings and his laws. And that we would not give our daughters as wives to the peoples of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. And that if the peoples of the land bring wares or any grain to sell on the Sabbath, we would not buy it from them on the Sabbath or on a set-apart day. And we would forego the seventh year and the interest of hand. And a couple of chapters later, in chapter 13, you'll see some similar language. I'm going to read 15 through... 22. In those days I saw in Yehuda those tr trading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves and loading donkeys with wine, grapes, and figs, and all kinds of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. So I warned them on the day they sold food, and men of Zor dwelt there, bringing in fish and all kinds of goods, and sold them on the Sabbath to the children of Yehuda and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Yehuda, and said to them, What evil matter is it this that you are doing, profaning the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers do the same, so that your Elohim 
brought all this evil on us and on this city, yet you bring added wrath on Israel by profaning the Sabbath. And it came to be at the gates of Jerusalem, as it began to be dark before the Sabbath, that I commanded the gates to be shut, and commanded that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And I stationed some of my servants at the gates, so that no burdens would be brought in on the Sabbath day. And the merchants and sellers of all kinds of wares spent the night outside Jerusalem once or twice. And I warned, warned them and said to them, Why do you spend the night around the wall? If you do so again, I lay hands on you. Woo! From that time on, they came no more on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites, that, that's Levites in King James, that they should cleanse themselves, and they should come, guarding the gates to set apart the Sabbath day. Remember me, O my Elohim, concerning this also. The pardon, and pardon me according to the greatness of your kindness. Here we have three different scriptures where buying and selling on Sabbath were looked down upon, and not held in high esteem. Nehemiah even threatened to lay hands on some of the people they were selling on Shabbat. I don't think he was talking about praying for them either. <laughs> The Sabbath of Yahweh will be honored from now until eternity, forever. We have to remember it's all about Him and not about us. Let us as Israel of today do our utmost to honor the Sabbath and keep it set apart to Yahweh and not following the example of ancient Israel and their disobedience. Shalom.